I'm Kathy Ellsworth, and I'll be your clerk for the day. A little bit about haberdashery. It's a great word, isn't it? Ever wondered what it is? Why is haberdashery called haberdashery? The word comes from haberdasher, which means seller of small things. These small things sometimes traditionally included men's hats, which led to the American definition of men's shops. At various times throughout history, the term haberdashery has referred to a dealer as stated in this paragraph of hats or capes or seller of notions, such as small things like uh, thread and needles, buttons, coily to a person, who sells liquor as well. Hmm. <laughs> Nowadays, with hats not being as fashionable as they once were, the word mostly is applied as clothing or outfitters for men, with haberdashery referring to the establishment or the goods sold there. Haberdasher derives via Middle English from habertus, an Anglo-French word for a kind of a cloth, as does the <coughs> obsolete noun, haberdash, which one meant petty merchandise like uh, men's, men's razors or little brushes or things of such, sewing kits, things like that. Small wares, and it all types to small venues. The word haberdasher and haberdashery both saw a greatly increased number of searches over the internet as a re result of Quentin Tarantino's movie, The Hateful Eight. Has anybody <laughs> saw that show? Well, they had in the proceedings of the film, they, it all took place in this little cabin called Minnie's Haberdashery. Well, this word is found at least as far back as the middle of the 16th century. It was found in writings such as Edgar Allan Poe, where he said, you talked of having a haberdashery sign to the shop. And Jane Austen's writings, Ford's was the principal woolen draper, linen draper, and haberdasher shop united. What kind of Also, President Herbert Hoover. One of the first sightings of the word is seen in an English poet Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, where Chaucer describes peddlers who sold buttons, needles, and other sewing, sewing items. Uh, this dates to the word back to about the 14th century. Now the history and entomology for haberdasher, the origin of the word haberdasher has long challenged scholars. Its earliest known occurrence tracked by the Middle English Dictionary is as a surname, Thomas Haberdasser, or Will Haberdasher. It was recorded in 1280 in the Capitulary of an Oxfordshire Abbey. Well, in the 14th century, evidence for the word and the occupation became more substantial, and the diversity of items carried by a medieval haberdasher from laces, or caps, capes, game boards, beads, stationary supplies. They're all detailed in an inventory made in 1378, included in the letter books of the Guild Hall of London. There was a man named Henry Thompson Riley. Memorials of London and in the London life he wrote about in the 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries. Henry Riley had earlier edited a group of letter books containing records from the London's traditional city hall. And in them he found what he believed to be the key to the entomology of the word haberdasher. In it was a list of items. They were called uh, scavengers, a bill for scavengers. And as most other items on the list were fabrics. 
Riley came to the conclusion that Hapertus was a fabric. In the glossary up to the Anglo-French words, he defines it as a cloth of a particular texture, probably coarse or thick. In the word Habertus, there he defines it as, and no doubt the original of the present word haberdasher, especially as the present word is represented by the word haberdashery, in almost the exact similar passage. So most dictionaries compiled since Riley's work contain some version of this etymology. Also, there was another reference from a Henry Galt. For very small items of merchandise called haberdash, the early English customs, this came from a 1918 book out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. From all appearances, this word is a bad formation from haberdasher, which, whatever its origin, is attested much earlier. But in this light, it is hard to see habertas as anything more than an exceptionally inherent variant of haberdash. As Riley makes clear, it appears to denote the same thing as haberdashery, which is a transparent derivative from haberdasher, and means articles sewed by haberdashers. So much emphasis is on cloth, fabric, and articles like that, but also of small wares. Well, that's the history, the entomology, of the word. Um, it's still unclear a lot of times to scholars today where it actually came from, but through Riley and Galt, they think it came from there. Do you have a dasher still exist today? Of course they do. Most clothing today isn't made by hand. Instead, it's machine made and sold in large retail stores. As nouns, the difference between haberdashery and millinery is that haberdashery is like ribbons, uh, some lace, um, the needles, some sewing items. Uh, millinery is more like hats, uh, like women's hats. Another uh, related word to men's items is millinery, haberdashery store, men's store, leather goods, clothing store, men's furnishings, or brick and brack. Here's an interesting fact for you. Was Harry Truman a haberdasher? Yes. Yes. During yes. World War I, he became a captain in the Army, and upon his return to the United States, he decided to quit farming and he pursued a career as a haberdasher. In downtown Kansas City, together with his military friend, Edward Eddie Jacobson, some examples of haberdashery is on the table here. Uh, you have the small items like the fans. Uh, you have some Victorian pictures here, uh, little pillows, uh, embroidery, things like that. So in summary, haberdashery derives from habertus. That's thought to have meant small wear. Although others say it was used to describe a type of fabric. Uh, the word has been around for centuries. Nonetheless, the true origin of it is still unknown today. Often the word haberdashery is short for heavy. So if you hear that being banded about, you know what the abbreviation means. The UK and the US haberdasheries are a little bit different. Uh, interestingly, uh, the word haberdashery has a different meaning with our friends across the pond, in that the word means notions. It's used to describe haberdashery supplies. In the US, the word haberdashery is instead a term used to describe a specialty store for men. They also sell what we know haberdashery supplies as I mentioned, the buttons, the needles, and more. As time passed, U.S. haberdasheries evolved. It also tailored to women, uh, women's attire, women's hats, 
women's accessories. However, in the UK, they became the go-to place of all sorts for sewing, bits and bobs, more of a craft and sewing style. The world of sewing and sewing accessories has experienced a massive boost in interest recently, partly due to the pandemic. Lots of people turned to their hobbies to pass time, and even more people discovered new hobbies. Haberdashery today. What would you call a haberdashery store today, present day? Well, Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, just to name a few. The haberdashery has everything you're looking for and more. Filled with hip clubs, grooming oh. products, male accessories and knickknacks, and you are sure to leave with one of a kind of find. <laughs> Stop in our unique shop today before you go and browse about what I've got. Uh, you will leave with a gift today. You can pick out your own beautiful fan if you like. You can also pick out some of these beautiful Victorian pictures. You can get your own uh, frame if you'd like and uh, put these in your home. So you can have a look before you go. Some of the things on the table here, um, they are uh, from the Victorian era. And some of those items are this necklace here with the cameo. Um, this was actually uh, a jewelry box given to me. Uh, the girl on it, uh, the gift giver, said that it looked like me when I was little. <clears throat> they also sold little things like toys. This is an antique telephone. <laughs> And they also had uh, little rolling animals on um, rollers, little bears and such for toys. The many beads and hats, uh, your traveling luggage tickets, things of the sort. A little Victorian doll. And they were very famous for going to masquerade parties. Uh, world travelers also would pick up um, accessories like bracelets. Now these are from Thailand. We did have an exchange student from Thailand, and these are made of wood and painting. Uh, the straw hats were worn, and then of course you know you had your patterns of uh, the the sewing of the day, and the fabrics, the purses, and the charms, and different things. In this bedroom, a tap top hat is on the footstool there, and in those days, in the 1930s or so, they did wear the top hats. Um, out on the street, or sometimes at the pubs, they wear more of the, the you know, straw hats. And then we have many uh, pictures of straw hats uh, done by Susan Ray Beardsley here at Havala Beardsley. They have uh, uh, the flower <coughs> the straw hat. Up on the second landing. And then at Ruthmere, they have the straw hat with the raspberries. So those hats were all very famous yeah. as well.